All right, everyone, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jill DiRito. I am the Director of Sales for the North American West Region. With me, I have Allison Smith, Director of Strategic Accounts uh, and, and Corporate Partnerships. Today, we also have our wonderful newer customer, Gabby from HW Almond, joining us. And uh, Gabby, could you just take a moment, uh, introduce yourself, your company, and uh, how long you've been using CleanSec? Like they mentioned, my name is Gabby Chavarria. I am the Quality and Food Safety Manager for Harris Wolf California Almonds. We process almonds here. Uh, we do hauling and shelling, we have farming, and we do high-end products like uh, paste and powder, protein powder. I've been with Maritech for a month and a half, actually. I'm fairly new, so I know very well the ins and outs of how the project starts, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it as I go. Excellent, yes. You may be one of the, the best panelists we could have in terms of how to get started and all the new questions that come up in the process. So with that being said, I, I will start with a question uh, that, that came from one of our uh, customers before the webinar. Have, so have you implemented this technology across multiple sites? And then if so, how did you go about getting the support of others within your organization? Yes, we purchased two of the hand washing sets, the three bay ones for two of our facilities. We were able to install it right away very easily for one of our facilities here in California. The other one, uh, we haven't had the time to do it, not because we don't want to, but because it's uh, we do have to do a couple of changes on the system before we can actually put it in place. Uh, it was very easy. We had really good support from management and senior management. Actually, the one that I first talked to about it was our vice president. And when I got in contact with Lisa, who was my rep at that, um, she gave me everything I needed, like all the science behind it, all the data, all when it comes to the quoting, and even if I needed to do a little bit more of like how our return will be and how the employees will take it, she was so helpful and everything. So it was very easy and I had a lot of support. I do get a lot of questions about, you know, how hard it is or how I verified, but we are all getting on the same page. Very good. Excellent. So, Gabby, another question that came in was how effective is automated hand washing when compared to manual hand washing? So I think this is a great follow up question to what you just mentioned as you were making the decision to purchase clean tech. What were some of those uh, items that came to mind when considering automation versus manual practices? Well, definitely one of the things that you think about when you wash your hands and one of the things that they teach you is that you have to rub your hands, right? That's one of the things that you're whole 10 uh, and sing your happy birthday song. So being on this system where you just put your hand in and just let it out, it did ask a lot of questions and we wanted to know how effective the chemical was, how it was not rubbing your hands uh, will help the entire cleaning situation. And also for uh, auditing reasons, we needed to know that type of a data. And so, like I said, all the data was shared with us and the, and because we were doing it in the whole transition with COVID-19, it came out the question of like how efficient is with COVID-19. So we also got that information with Lisa. She shared everything. And we do have um, weekly swabs of our employees. So we catch them on time. They do the swab and then they wash it with the, with the system and then do swabbing again just to verify it. And so far, we haven't had any issues whatsoever. Excellent, excellent. Allison, did you want to? Yeah, I would love to. So it actually transitions into another really great question that we got, which was, do we have any updated data regarding the effectiveness of Maritex hand washing chemicals during COVID-19 pandemic? So I would love to just uh, answer this question. So Maritech has performed over 50 clinical studies, including measuring the effectiveness of clean tech against the human coronavirus, specifically beta corona. And the results showed a three log or 99.9% .9 removal of that pathogen from the hands 
in just a single 12 second clean tech wash cycle. So definitely something that I think is important to note. And as a follow-up for you, Gabby, what I'd love to ask is, could you have any um, adaptions to your hygiene protocols as a result of the pandemic? Yes, we uh, had to increase our cleaning of locations and communal areas. Uh, hand washing, it's very much common sense in the food industry, as you all know, we do that. It's a GMP thing. It's a lifestyle thing. We all do it all the time. So it's not like really new and crazy where you have to tell employees, you have to wash your hands. I mean, they already know the, the whole system. But what has changed and is that they enjoy putting their hands on the cylinders for some reason. It's so much faster for them and there's no like, oh, but I have to go do this right now. It's just put it there, it's a short term. And then it's also cleaning. We got the one that is a, uh, we are a dry facility. So we did get the alcohol base for the standing. So it's a great system where you can have your hands get washed and your foot getting sanitized at the same time, instead of having to do your whole timing and then go to another location to get your hands, uh, your feet spray or foot foamers or whatever you have. So it hasn't made a huge, you know, we have to do more cleaning, but it definitely made it much easier and accessible for everybody. Yeah, that's fantastic. We like to call that 12 seconds to clean. Yeah. <laughs> and your hands washed all in one 12 second cycle. Yes. I love that. They love that. Gabby, I think you, you answered my next question, which is how is the cultural reception um, regarding the whole transition to this automated process and do the employees like it? Um, but you, you pretty much answered it, right? Yeah. Yeah. They do like it. Uh, one of the things that you wouldn't think they noticed certain things, but the, the fact that we invested in this new system and it was like upgrading it, they, it, it made them very proud and very happy to see that we were changing a little bit of different things. I was I, I was scared at the beginning of what they were gonna say because you have so many people in, in the plant and they have all their own opinions and it's, it's, hard, it's really hard, hard to make everybody happy. But so far out of, uh, I would randomly ask them, what do you think about the hand washing system? And they they all enjoy it. They don't really have anything negative. They have the questions of like, oh, don't you think we need to rub it because we have so much soil on our hands and things like that. But we're all navigating through the new system right now. So we're all learning as we go, but so far it's been great. I haven't gotten any bad comments from anyone. Excellent, excellent. So Gabby, one of the questions that came across was just around training. So again, talking to just that cultural change of using the automated hand washing systems, is there anything specifically you can share that you put in place or are going to put in place just to help reinforce training new employees and existing employees on the use of the Meritech system? Yeah, so uh, we got training ourselves from Michael, um, who is our rep here in California. And so he was also very helpful. He showed us how to put the chemicals. He shows how to do the, clean, the hand cleaning and all that. We decided to do GMP training right after we got it. So this whole month has been like a GMP uh, kind of festival, if you will. And so we kind of remind them though, one of the things we we noticed that they were doing is because they're so used to the regular foamers or the sprayers they wanted to like rub their feet on the on the pads and we had to train you don't have to do that anymore because it's always wet and it's a, there's no rubbing on your feet and also when you put your hands you don't want to like lay on it you have to just stand up and put your hands all the way in so that's one of the trainings but other than that it wasn't like crazy difficult and they all rested right away Good to know, good to know. Uh, and so this next question that we had come in uh, is really revolving around how automated hygiene has helped improve your hygiene protocols at the facility. And for you, maybe that looks like what you anticipate it to be, uh, being that you're about a month in now, or, yeah. or how has it improved the protocols already in that one month? It has in the sense that we've, um 
they're enjoying it. That's pretty much all I can say. I can't really speak for long term. And we are, like I said, it's still a fairly new thing for us. So we're kind of learning as we go. And it really hasn't changed much except the fact that they enjoy it and it's easier for them and there's less complaints for sure. Excellent. So uh, Gabby, one of the questions was what comments have you received from auditors or customers who have seen the clean tech systems in place? Now, I think this is interesting because right at the start of our discussion today, you were mentioning that you're about to get underway with an audit, correct? Yes, actually, next door, I have uh, our SQF audit. <laughs> and so I told them I would step out to do this real quick. And so um, it, I will find out in a few minutes, I think. Yeah, and I think it'd be helpful for those attending to just kind of share what you and Jill and I had discussed today about you know, what we typically see, what questions our customers may get from auditors. So. You know, something that we talked about is they may ask about you know the efficacy testing or the validation of studies for our technology so that's something that we always have available for our customers to keep on hand as part of their quality document should that question come up during an audit and then additionally you posed a great question to us today about you know what other verification steps are our customers doing if an auditor asks so what we had told you and wanted to share is, you know, just quant test strips can be used to do a verification on the Meritech system calibration. And that can be done, you know, as part of a regular SOP or just shared as part of your process if an auditor were to ask. Yeah, so that's probably one of the new things that I'm going to be implementing. Um, so it was a great tip. I had asked a question about, because not just auditors, but people here are wondering about, how do we verify that the concentration that the Meritech machine uses is what we got sold? And so the test strips and the 200 to 400 BPMs, it's exactly the answers to all my questions. So it's just a matter of sending it, checking it every week or or whenever we change the, the, the gallons or whatnot. So we'll be implementing that. Perfect. Very good, very good. And Gabby, uh, you did take advantage of buying the service contract with the new equipment and just wanted to get your take on why you went that direction and what you hope that will help is in terms of our partnership and, and keeping things moving smoothly. Yeah, I am very excited. I didn't, uh, when I was learning about your service, uh, there were two options that we can go. It, it's either purchase it all along, all of it, or do the extended monthly verification. Everything that you guys do has the, the cool thing about yours is that you take care of the machine completely. We don't have to worry about anything. You bring us the chemicals. You, if anything goes wrong, you, fix it, it has nothing to do with us, and I we really appreciate that. Also, when the three years are up, you we can upgrade the machine, which was really nice, a, a really nice caveat to it, so we can always have the newest system. Very good, so it sounds like, uh, and I probably just didn't see this correctly, but you went with the Clean Tech Plus option then, which is that all-inclusive monthly uh, service solution and price of the equipment, okay. Oh yeah, I went through all, all of it together, yeah. Okay, okay, very good, very good. Perfect, so um, Gabby, question that came through was about compliance tracking. So um, as a reminder, our systems have a compliance monitor on them that's gonna be tracking the number of hand washes that are performed. Do you plan on using that as a way to monitor compliance? Um, and how do you anticipate it will help you ensuring food safety at your facility? Yes, we've been having a couple of discussions about it because we did notice it has uh, the recordings in there. And so as we're learning the system, we have discussed about, okay, how many hand washes can we verify with the hand swabbing? And can we look at the chemicals and put a whole packet together? Uh, but still not there yet. We're still trying to figure that out. Very good, very good. Allison, one of the most common questions that we get um, 
when we're having those initial conversations mm -hmm. with new customers is how do we clean these machines? Mm -hmm. Like, what does that look like? What does that process look like? And really, um, it is quite intuitive, right? Yep. But are there any thing? It, are there any things be beyond what you would do with a normal SOP of your sink, or what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So our recommendation is just to, you know, use the same cleaning SOPs that you would have on, you know, other pieces of equipment in your facility, especially, you know, other, you know, sinks or hygiene areas that you want to use a hard surface sanitizer to keep it wiped down clean and maintained on a daily basis um several of our units do have a built-in self-cleaning feature which gabby i know that your units have that feature on it which is nice because just once a day you're getting that feature of having the systems internally cleaning those hand wash cylinders and flushing it down the lines and the drain so most commonly, that's what we're recommending and we're seeing our customers put in place for cleaning protocols on the units. Um, Gabby, is there anything that, you know, you feel like beyond what I mentioned you'll be doing? No, you mentioned it all. I did receive from Lisa an SOP already of how to do the daily, weekly, and quarterly cleaning. So we'll be definitely implementing that as we train everybody. So. It covers everything from the foot mat to the cylinders to the outside and ATV and all. So you guys have a great system there with the great clean sanitation programs. I don't really have to think about it too much, just kind of follow it. Fantastic. And another thing to mention um, is just because you are taking advantage of our Clean Tech Plus program and that includes service as part of it. In addition to, you know, just having any service or parts covered, you will also be having your biannual preventative maintenance with one of our Meritech service engineers. And as part of that preventative maintenance, they'll do a deep cleaning. They'll also do, you know, recommended PMs on the equipment and be issuing new calibration certificates to you at that time, which is just additional documentation to have as part of your audit files and quality files. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true. And, and another thing, um, glad you mentioned, Gabby, that Michael had come on site and helped with the new orientation, getting everything up and running, making sure that everyone was aware of what needed to have ownership in regards to the cleaning or the ongoing maintenance of the systems. I, I think that it really comes down to knowing within your facility who does have ownership of that, changing out of the solutions and who is going to have ownership of that ongoing cleaning moving forward because uh, really it's just sort of a small um, piece of the process that sometimes can get missed uh, that right. it can be assumed that someone is handling it but without having that direct conversation and the chance for them to ask us questions it, it does commonly get missed so yeah. we do like to come on site and, and help establish that ownership absolutely good point Jill. So Gabby, this is a specific question that we had submitted. Actually, someone from an infant formula manufacturing facility was asking about, you know, how do I choose the right Meritech system for my needs? Um, I know you mentioned you spoke with Lisa during the process to arrive at the equipment, but can you tell us a little bit more about specifically how you arrived at selecting that 4000 S three bay unit for your facilities? Well, there were definitely a couple of things I required. I required, um, I wanted a three to four bases. Uh, because of my size, I couldn't have like individuals. We were looking at, we, we used to have foamers in our location. We wanted to get rid of the foamer because instead of uh, putting foam on the floor, it was attacking people's shoes. And so, you know, nobody liked that. So, <laughs> wanted to make sure I got rid of, and I wanted something that they can stand and sanitize their feet. And then as well as, I wanted something that it can help them and get them excited at washing their hands. I know it sounds uh, funny, but it's just where the industry has been and it's going, and especially with COVID-19, it will continue going that way. So we wanted to have them, not the complaint of like, it's too long or I have things to do. No, it's just like easy go. So we wanted that. And also, how many times are we gonna do it? And it was a decision that I took by myself. Lisa talked to me, gave me all the different options, all the different things that we can do for the wet uh, environment and the dry environment. 
But also Michael came over to the site and he was able to look at my site and walk the site with me and what we did. And he gave me the recommendation. So as the three of us, because we did meet up uh, two to three times together and we talked about it, um, they recommended that with me and they, I saw the picture. And one of the things that Michael um, has is that he could come to the facility with a sample and he can tr we can try it on the site if we wanted to before we buy it. So that was really nice. Uh, I didn't get a chance to try that one because my boss was like, just get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, but we can have him try it first. And he's like, no, just get it, just get it. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. But that's excellent. Thank you for sharing that uh, on your experience. And um, so I think she brought up a couple great points about you know, some components of what we include in the Maritech partnership experience. Um, specifically, Gabby mentioned site surveys yes. and also demonstrations. So can you share that with everybody about you know, what that looks like? 100%. Uh, so with those site surveys, that is a value that we're incredibly proud to offer. Uh, it's been a challenge with, with COVID, uh, but we have transitioned to doing more virtual uh, site surveys and things of that nature. But I'm really glad that Michael was able to get in your facility, get eyes on the flow of your GMP process, and really have a better understanding of what that looks like. Um, and so he did bring a demo on site. You just weren't able to use it. Is that correct? Yeah, we weren't able to play with it. <laughs> okay. But I wanted to mention another thing that I forgot to say that we require was to comply with COVID-19 because even though we had, we wanted the three bases, um, we also needed to make sure we had some type and want a of the separation and one of the things that you guys offer for the covenanting are the curtains or the um, shield so we ended up buying the shield and the reason why we chose that was because for daily cleaning and shift cleaning that was, we thought it would be just much easier to wipe it down than the curtains because curtains people don't like it they will move it out of the way and we didn't want that we wanted to have it the harsh shield in between the hard separation so that's how we ended up going for that also very good very good so you went with the the social distancing shields that we offered yes okay okay yeah well, even though you didn't, uh, you know, get to demo the hand washing systems before, I'm glad that you were so anxious to get them in that uh, that decision made was made without it. But just so everyone knows, we obviously can do those on site. And then also, you can see behind Jill and I, we actually have a, a demonstration wall here. So um, we've been doing virtual demonstrations, just adapting to, you know, those situations where we do have a little bit more difficulty getting into facilities at the moment. Yeah, and a common question that we receive around demos is, what do, what do I need for your demo system to work properly uh, on the demo day? And really, uh, it's, it's even more basic than the basic install for our systems. So our systems just need that hot and cold water line, just like a sink, uh, also a P-trap, just everything is very intuitive and straightforward. But it's even more simple when we bring our demo system on site uh, we just need a sink that has a hot and cold um, handles, uh, no photo eyes, no knee operated pedals, things like that, just because we need the continuous flow to set up our demo system. So something like a janitor's closet, although not glamorous, um, not the most you know, beautiful site for a, for a demo, really is effective and really is a good place to set up our systems. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was very uh, surprised when I asked that question because when we had set up to do the demo, I did ask that question. I was like, what do I need? Do I need to set you up? And he was like, no, just just water. And we got it going. I was like pretty impressed by that. One of the questions that's come in since we've been chatting is how many hand cleanings are in each chemical container? So Gabby, if you don't mind, I'll start and then love for you to expand. So um, our Ultra Pure, which is our hand hygiene solution that's used as part of the clean tech hand washing systems um, for our industrial units is packaged in a two and a half gallon container. And that two and a half gallon container will last 1,750 washes. 
Um, so just an important thing to note, as I know when you were talking to the team up front, making this decision on investing in clean tech, you know, an important component of our technology is our hand washing equipment combined with our chemicals. So that's just to ensure the clinical effectiveness, it supports our studies, and also is a really nice solution that's going to be conditioning and improving skin health as your employees are now washing their hands in these systems. Was there anything specifically for you that came up as you were making this decision, recognizing that it's both the equipment and the hygiene solutions as part of this partnership? Yes, we did have the question, are we gonna be using more soap than we currently are, or how is this gonna help us with the supply, especially because of COVID-19, we did run into the situation as the, the soaps were not, available at the time so we were trying to figure it out this and it was a uh, crucial but uh, like i said lisa was very helpful and she explained to me about how many hand washings come on through each gallon now we do have like a 200 employees so a one gallon will last about six days and then we have to change it because they go up and down so it hasn't um it has improved our uh, budget when it comes to the soap because we used to change the soaps like every two days <laughs> yeah it's nice to have that determined amount uh set amount dispensing in every single hand wash yep easier to forecast for sure and, and gabby i'm glad that you brought up your employee count uh that's another common question that we use uh, when we come on site to do an on-site survey and have the conversation with you um, in tandem with taking a look at your facilities we want to know how many employees you have uh, and then more importantly how many employees per shift do you need to get through that sanitation process and what amount of time right so that will really drive the recommendation that we make for which system you should have yeah. Yeah. Yes, we went through that. It was like I said, um, the reps, Lisa and Michael, were just such a joy to work with. I Gabby, I just wanted to um actually just ask you if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Jill or I. Being a new customer, we certainly want to just open um the floor for you while we're waiting for Juan to maybe get connected. If there's anything that you think um anyone joining might be interested in hearing us answer that's crossed your mind yes one of the questions um i had and this one was for juan it's because i guess i mentioned okay. the okay. i have Bye. my bought it next door so i am working on that and i wanted to ask juan what type of questions does the otter ask you and how do you answer the questions do you particularly have any procedure where you show you know, hand washing, or do you do any concentration, or have they asked you anything like that? Do you show them the research? Have they said anything? Yes, um, that's uh, obviously. Did you guys did you guys hear me well, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, we present the information of the hand washing system in our orientation day how they work. Uh, that's my supervisor over there. Uh, say hi, Ryan. <laughs> oh yeah, you can, you can go in uh, the, um, he's part of the team. Uh, so I was saying like, we present how it works, the, the, how the washing cycle uh, works. And the, the, the interesting part for us and probably for you guys is uh, we modify a certain point of the, in, in your original system because we connect the hand washing with the doors. So we do some electrical uh, kind of engineering stuff over there uh, because you cannot go inside in, in, uh, of the production area without washing your hands. If not, that door is always locked. So that was one of the, my biggest concern before because I know it's gonna sound like a 1970s that we, don't, we have somebody there in the door and telling everybody, hey, you need to wash your hands. Hey, you need to wash your hands. And, and obviously for me, that doesn't work uh, like that. It's not, it's not good for auditors or inspections, uh, especially when the when the FDA uh, is here or somebody else, BRC, SQF. 
So that's the first day. The second day of orientation, uh, especially like coming to our uh, our department, we explain like uh, with details how the system work. We have all the calibration report over there by the door. Uh, so we have a, a PM service every month. If mm -hmm. I, if I, uh, I sorry, I have a bunch of stuff in my mind right now, but if I don't remember very well, um, and, and we have the SSOP, how the hand washing uh, works for uh, inspections, uh, risks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Juan, and so glad you could join us. Um, if we could just back up just a little bit, and could you introduce yourself, uh, your supervisor, your company, oh, yeah. and then just <laughs> and and how long you've been a partner of Maritech? Yes. Um, so I'm Juan Carlos, sanitation manager over here in Cafe Bali Plan. Been working here almost four years. Ryan Whitehurst is my uh, sanitation supervisor. He helped me a lot in the department. Um, I met Meritech before probably we have uh, yeah, Meritech and Shamrock and Foods, right? Probably like uh, seven years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. We have a different, uh, obviously in Chamber Foods, we were working in the meat division, uh, a wet environment. So we have a, a wall former over there, different system, uh, obviously for a boot uh, program. So we were working with them like seven, eight years ago. And then I came here and also in, I believe in, uh, I don't know if you know this plan, Mission Foods, with, that we do the flour and corn tortillas there. So they have, we start, when I left, we start building something with Meritech there. I don't know if they, they uh, finished the project, but that was, I was part of that, but I left the company for a better opportunity with Chamra. Yeah, but it's almost like eight years ago. I was just at the Mission Foods in Albuquerque last week. Um, oh, yeah? What plant did you come from? They said 10 people here in the Phoenix area. Okay. Yeah. I was there probably almost like five years there. Juan and Ryan, hi, Allison. Uh, welcome. Nice to see you both. One of the questions that we had asked Gabby earlier, because you are a Meritech partner for several years now across multiple companies, one thing we'd love for you to share is how you feel like Meritech automated hygiene equipment has helped improve your hygiene protocol. Improve like a 360 degrees, 120% uh, my hand washing systems. And obviously the, it's for uh, food safety requirements. So the, the, uh, the washing hands actually before that I built this system with Meritech, FDA was concerned about how that works uh, and how we'll be working with the amount of people that we have here. Uh, yeah, but it changed like a totally, totally 360%, uh, 60 degree, as I said before, we used to have a person there saying, uh, telling everybody you need to wash your hands, you need to wash your hands. I mean, like, it's impossible that uh, a bakery like this one that we need to have a person like that. I need to get something automized. I need to get something that block everybody, including myself, if I want to go without washing my hands uh, to the production floor. And, and, and I saw something interesting in the Meritech um, equipment and, and, and it's working well so far. So it's been uh, two years, I believe, two years, almost two years that we have the hand washing um and it's working fine so it it, it 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 will improve a lot in your uh depends on what kind of plans you guys have uh and the structure and all the stuff but it will improve a lot and maybe to expand on that a little bit one how does it specifically improve the footwear hygiene step at your facility i don't have the footwear connected to the system right now oh, okay for, for safety reason, because going inside of the production area is a dry uh, area. Uh, obviously we use a non-slippery shoes, but it's for like, and the way I connect the system over here at the main uh, employee entrance, we don't have any drains on the floor connected over there. So I couldn't, if I want to do that, it's gonna be more expensive and, and, and 
that I need to cry a, a little more for, for money. <laughs> and I don't want to do that because I have another projects, but I don't want that. Uh, well, no, I, I want that, but I couldn't for the structure issues. I couldn't like uh, build it. Got but it. now that you asked for that, I need to figure out something for, for shoes. I need to create something for like a shoe program and like a boot, uh, rubber boot program. And I know you guys have the equipment and it's something I, I believe uh, re, uh, Lisa, I was uh, talking before, but for budget reason, they couldn't start by, but I need to present something that I can start uh, thinking to build here. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, um, you know, Jill, something that might be helpful to share is you know, oftentimes we'll get questions from customers related to wanting to onboard a captive footwear program or looking to change the types of footwear in the facility and are looking for guidance on recommendations for cleaning and how to best address debris or sanitizing. So, you know, certainly we love having that a part of our, you know, consultative partnership to be able to offer guidance on that and advise on the best recommendations for equipment to address you know what's needed to achieve you know good footwear hygiene in your facility absolutely yeah yes. um actually what i'm using i'm glad that you said that so you guys understand what i'm using right now uh so after my my cleaning procedures and all my areas we use a quad in high concentration with a, a three gallon container and we spray the floors right so the the, the sanitizer can stay there and everybody like who walks in the areas uh, uh, can uh, can have that sanitizer on the floor. The other uh, sanit program that I have is uh, peroxy acetic acid, but it's a powder that I put in every single door in the plant. So all that powder gets taken gets taken to your shoes. So every everywhere you go, you you have your uh, uh, your shoes sanitized. It's not my favorite, uh, how do you say, because it doesn't, it looks like messy because I have that powder on the floor, but it's, it's get good results. But I try to get like something less messy and something like uh, it's effective like the powder. Yep, Gabby, I see you nodding your head and smiling as well. It, it is a challenge, especially in the dry facilities. Right, right. Yeah. I've dealt with the powder, I've dealt with the uh, spraying on your shoes, and I've dealt with the foamer. And right now that I've had the dry-based, uh, alcohol-based uh, for your hand washing, I so far enjoying it so much easier than everything else I've tried. Right, right. Um, so just start from my question. So you're trying to build something with Meritech in your plan? No, I just started. I have a month. So I just barely went through the whole process. And so okay. I'm trying to learn, uh, I've, my first audit with it, it's gonna, it's, it's happening as we speak. So I know I'm gonna get a couple of questions. We just installed it. So it's fairly new and I have all the certificates and information, but going forward, I wanted to know what you've encountered and how you would deal with it. Yeah, and the other uh, suggestion, you need to have your backup system because that thing is, is electrical units. Yes. And just in case if your electrical units is not in, is not working, how how are you gonna make sure your people are washing their hands if that unit is not working? So what we did here is like okay, we built outside of the production plant the the hand washing system with Meritech. But inside of the plant, going right away, just like you need to go open the door and go right away to the left, we have just a normal uh, sink, a three compartment, not three compartment sink, but it's a sink with three, uh, a little for the water. And we have hand soap, like a container over there, and like you can spray these batteries. So it's something that you need to think about it because it's like the, actually was the FDA asking me that so for that reason we do that backup system in the other side of the wall okay yeah, yeah. we have uh so the way we set up ours is that you have we have hand washing stations uh right outside the bathroom there are normals we kept it for the bathroom section and then we have another entrance where we have the Meritech. but as soon as you go in we have access to another sink okay so 
because I haven't made all the changes. I only bought two for both of my facilities and I'm trying to figure it out how it's going to work because I do have other facilities within the facility. So I'm just kind of trying it little by little. Right. And you guys, uh, you have like the original uh, structure, like you put like the two gallons over there. Yes. Like one for the ultra pure and the other one is for the, uh, uh, the self-cleaning solution, right? Yeah. So one of the one of the other things that we modify the system uh, is we build uh, a thirty five gallon container, stainless steel container, next to the hand washing because for for our uh, for the amount of people that we have, one gallon is going to be gone in probably thirty minutes. Mm. Uh, and then we build that. We connect the 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 the, uh, the units to that container, and then we just pour like a 35 gallons of the ultra pure uh, two percent uh, cleaning solution, and the other one is the self cleaning solution. So we don't need to worry probably for a week and a half or, or two yeah. weeks sometime. So if you can do, I don't know how how many people do you have in the plan, but if you can, I will recommend if you can build something like that connected so you don't. Because it's, it's, it was a time consuming just just to to find uh, to have somebody like changing the gallons every like 10, right. 15 minutes. Right. We don't I don't think we have enough to go through it. It does last us a couple of days. Uh, but we have talked about changing the procedure to add a different um, amount. And I know it's still in the works because we are still learning about how this is going to work. But one of the things I did talk about was how I wanted to connect the hand washing to our doors. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because I was just saying how I uh, wanted to try out that they had to wash their hands and then open the door automatically for them. So I'm yeah, glad so, that you kind of try that. So, sorry, what we did here, because I get I get like kind of like, but this is me, I get kind of like mad when there's somebody told me, no, you cannot do this. And be like, oh no, that's not true. So we motive, we we find some electrical guy here, and I explain it. I need every time the washing cycle start, I need a light telling you that uh, the the washing si the cycle is still on. Mm -hmm. When the red light, uh, well, it's a green light in the air unit and the hand washing system, it get green. Does mean the washing cycle finished, so you can take out your hands from the from the from the hand washing, and then send a signal, and then this is depends on the amount of people that you have. You have like ten seconds to go to the door, open the door, or like just push the door and um, and go to the production, because if it's gonna happen if you do that, it's gonna happen if you. Uh, somebody's gonna talk to you. Hey Ryan, look at this. You wash your hands. And hey Ryan, look, uh, we need to do this. And the, the door is gonna lock right away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and that's pretty great because you cannot go inside again, inside of the production area. Now you need to wash your hands again so you can the doors can open. Right, right. Also, like we modify the doors because we have normal doors, so I don't know long. It was like kind of crazy doors, but we changed the frames. We we connected actually some electrical doors so we can we can uh, not affect the hand washing system of the original uh, uh, structure of that. Yeah, uh, it sounds like a great idea and uh, I would discuss it. So I want to see if I can try at least at one of the facilities, but I'll and probably come back to you. <laughs> The what? I'll probably be contacting you to ask you questions. No, that's fine, and I can share with you uh, with you the. I remember I still have the plan, uh, how we did it and all the stuff because I presented to the FDA because they were a little concerned how that's gonna work. By the end of the day, I was fighting with it, and you know what? This is gonna work. Uh, this is all the project. This is how it's gonna work. We're gonna connect it to the door, and they will say, okay. And we're gonna have the backup system, so they were happy about it. Um, actually, we are expecting FDA. I don't know, probably next month here. Uh, also, the other thing that 
it works for us because if you have an open area with your hand washing system uh, is located, people are people. People is gonna jump that uh, uh, that process and go in someone else. Probably like somebody is talking with somebody and I'm gonna wait over here until that person in the wash their hand, their hands, and all that stuff. So we build uh, like a stainless steel bars around or in front of the uh, of the hand washing and around the door so nobody can go anywhere. You need to go all the east of that bars and wash your hands and go inside yeah. of the area. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of crazy guy, but I imagine myself at all the all the aspect that auditors is gonna ask. Yeah. So why this? Why this? How you control it? How you get this on uh, on uh, working properly and all that stuff? So and it's working pretty nice so far. Yes, and that's what I was trying to do right now, um, which I'm glad that I had this conversation. I was looking forward to speaking to you about it because I need to prepare for the questions that he would ask me. Right now, they're right. still doing the um, documents review and doing the HACCP program. So in a few minutes, I think we're going to end up going through the facility, and then I know that's going to be the first question. So I was talking to our vice president, who's right here. He was like, are you prepared for this? And I was like, yeah, we'll be as soon as I talk to someone. <laughs> yeah. Do you have this study that they did as a merit tech? Like how efficient is it? Okay. That's one yeah. of the things that we need to present. The other that, one is. So oh. far, I was prepared for that paperwork. And also uh, as a verification, we always do hand swabbing every week, a random hand swabbing. So that's a way of showing that they do have clean hands before they go in. So we do it dirty and then we did one with the system and then swab after. And so we have that as a proof as well. Yeah. Also, the other question that you need to be ready, how often you clean that hand washing system? Yes. And we, uh, they, I did get the SOP from Meritech. And so I have the daily, the weekly, and the quarterly. And so we have that documented. We already had the things documented in our regular stuff. So all we had to do was implement and train the new version, but it's already being documented. So it's great. How long you been having this equipment? I've only had it for a month. <laughs> oh, so you so just started. I'm, new. I'm still new and trying to figure it out what it looks like. I just finished uh, pretty much yesterday, signed the contract kind of thing. Yeah. So you need to be prepared like for the question, how many people do you have in the plan and how many washing cycles do you have already in your uh, in your uh, reader? Because they're going to make, they're going to probably, if they're smart, they're going to make the numbers. And for example, 200 people, like how many times 200 people wash their hands like every time they go inside? Because here, uh, probably we have 2,000, around 2,500 wash, washing cycle for every hand washing unit. So mm -hmm. it's like me, I wash like 10,000 times my hands. Right, so right, right. They look for that number. Yeah, and I'm going to have to prepare on that one because that's uh, fairly new for me. That's not something that we would do on a regular hand washing sink. So that's something I'm still kind of right. learning. The, um, right with the the compliance tracker on on the front of the system. So hopefully yeah, that is already there. Things in documenting. And so right. there, everything is uh, the tip of our hands. We just have to kind of learn our way in. And today would be our first trial with an auditor and see how it goes. <laughs> and what which auditor is that? If you don't mind that I ask. SQF. SQF. Yeah, they yeah. will ask you that. <laughs> I know, I know. So I have yeah. the the information up, but still, still learning, I guess. Just in case they ask you how you're gonna make sure that everybody's washing their hands, and and you know what, we have a project to block the front and everything, like uh, bars and everything, and they they probably will accept it. Yes, right, right. Uh, but that depends on any every auditor. Every auditor is different. So every auditor is different. So we have to just be prepared. At, this auditor that we have today is fairly, it's very new for us. It's the first time he's here. So um, okay. I have no idea what he's going to ask. Okay. I, I just want 
Thank you, great, Gabby. I'm really glad that we had the opportunity to do this today. I feel like you're going to be very well prepared now. Yes, and I appreciate you sharing that with us, and particularly that you got an opportunity to meet and talk to Juan. We wanted to have a newer customer and you know a, a customer who'd been a partner with Meritech for several years just to get um, that experience from both of you. So we'll definitely be sharing your information with each other. I think this is a great representation of just the power of collaboration within the industry and sharing best practices, especially as it relates to hygiene. So um, Juan, we did have an opportunity to go through most of the questions that we had received for our panelists with Gabby earlier. So everything from compliance monitoring to audit questions to ease of using the systems, cleaning, maintenance, but is there anything else as we round out these last couple minutes of our time together today that either of you would like to add in relation to your experience with the Meritech partnership? Yeah, can I go to war with Meritech now? <laughs> <laughs> can he come to work with us? Yes, of course. No, really? <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, no, it's like, it's, it's, it's a good system that is gonna uh, work really fine, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna change the the minds people too, because one of the things that the when we install the units and and people tell me like hey we need to wash my hands and everybody was getting mad with me and be like so that's mean it's working so my project is working <laughs> um, so yeah it's gonna change their mind too uh, even they're they're probably they're gonna give you a hard time like two weeks a month and people getting mad, oh, I need to watch this. I need to do it again. I need to do it again. Yes, it's that we work for a uh, uh, manufacturing plant that we produce food. So we need to get uh, this program going. And then they don't even like, they don't even remember. They watch 10,000 times their, their, their hands. So it's like part, part of the program, part of their daily basis routine. And, and, and yeah, people, people like, um, hate changing sometime but it's like if we change for improvement there you go even i put my my uh my position to my boss and like hey are you sure this is gonna work yes if it doesn't work i'm gonna give you my uh resignation letter and that's it but I, i'm pretty sure it's gonna work so well, if you want to tell that to your boss but that's not right. <laughs> i was lucky because my boss was more like okay just get it it's great and I was like yeah that was easy and I like I said like you said people are always watching what we do and how we say things and and what we implement and yes there's times they do argue and fight because they don't like changes right but one of the things the Maritech did was that they saw us doing the upgrade on their sinks and they liked it they really like just put in their hands in the, in the cylinder like i was saying and so i didn't really have that much of a pushback except the fact that they were happy that we were doing their upgrades and that they're seeing that and how committed we are on foot safety and their safety and them being comfortable and so i was very concerned about what they would say because i i understand i cannot make everybody happy but i definitely want to get a buy-in from them because if right. they don't like it it doesn't matter how much money I put into it if they're not going to do it. So right. I'm, it worked out. Yeah, and it probably, yeah, for us, it's, it was the, for budget reason, it was kind of challenging because it was a lot, especially because I, I modified the system electronically. Yeah. And, of course, and it was, it was, yeah, it, uh, I don't know, I don't even remember, but it was a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, Plus the, the, the chemical that, that I'm buying right now, but obviously that's part of the process that for the, uh, the hand washing system, but it works really fine. I totally recommend it. And, 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 and actually I, I have a more ideas to work with Meritech, but yeah, so I totally recommend it, so. So do I, so far a great experience, very easy to work with. The reps have been very helpful. Any question I've had, they'd answer it right away. I have never been wondering what they are. Uh, information was all, all the way and always at my fingertips. So I had a great experience. I was such a great experience. They invited me to be one yeah, of the house. So glad. Yeah, me too. Thank you. I'm kind of famous right now. I mean, like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm on TV or something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Same. <laughs>
I just, I wanted to, as we wrap things up, I wanted to touch on something that I think bears mentioning the last step of the hand wash, uh, the dry. Yeah. And we had a question come in, so I think it's a good way to sort of uh, end, end this session together. Um, does the system wash and dry or is a hand towel still necessary? So, Allison? Yes, yes. So we do recommend uh, paper towels. Yep. So um, the best practice and really the most hygienic and efficient means is after the 12 second hand wash is complete, you have a few flicks of the fingers, exit the hands from the cylinders and then use a paper towel to dry your hands. So um, is that what you both are doing is paper towels? Yes. Two thumbs up. Good. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So glad we were able to get that last question in. And yeah. on behalf of the entire team here at Maritech, we appreciate your time today. We value our partnership uh, with you both and your commitment to food safety. And for any questions that were submitted that uh, we weren't able to get to today, we will be sending answers to those along with a recording of today's webinar. But again, Juan, Ryan, Gabby, thank you so much. You. And uh, look forward to continuing our partnership for many years to come.